What's going on? Welcome to the Macro Pigs podcast. I'm Lincoln. I'm Eva. And today's episode is brought to you by Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles, more flamboyant cousin. <laughs> In tune with the same? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's my running joke now. Okay. How are you? How was your weekend? Busy. Yes. So... Very busy. Both you of us. Too. Yeah, both of us. Yeah, very, very busy. Crazy, busy weekends. So we both uh, spent a portion of our weekend in Edmonton. At different times on the at same different day. Town, at different times on the same day for different reasons. So tell me about your Edmonton experience. I went up there to get tattooed on Saturday. Yes. So this was a tattoo that I had booked for a while. And this is what you got. That's what I got. That's Pretty what you neat. got. So explain it. Because I uh, saw the photo, like I, ex- yeah, explain yeah, yeah, the, it's explain all good. the tattoo. Uh, I started following this guy. I use Instagram a lot for um, art and tattoos, and mm-hmm. you do too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like just a good way to stay in tune with what people are doing. It's nice to see people's artwork and tattoos. Anyways, I, I came across this guy, Lip Rat, uh, not his real name. That's his IG handle. Um, and he was out of Vancouver at the time doing really cool traditional tattoos, kind of more on the folk arty side. Okay. I don't know if he would like that description of it, but when I think of the different styles of traditional tattoo, it fits more in the folk arty for me anyway. So that's my personal opinion. But, but yeah, so I was going to get tattooed by him in May. My dog ended up getting sick at the time that I was supposed to get tattooed. So I had to postpone it. Uh, he had some room in October. So I went up on Saturday to get tattooed. When we were discussing, he was like, you know, what do you want to get? What's the size? All that. Oh, right. You had said you were like, just do whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, so I yeah. just said, do whatever. Like I want, I love your art and uh, I just want you to do something that you want to do. Right. And he was like, okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I went up on Saturday, didn't tell him that I was heading up there. I was going to make him think that like uh, this Calgary guy bailed. I was mm. going to be like, I wasn't going to be like, yo, see you like today or what? I didn't like nothing. So I just rolled up and then, uh, yeah, it was great. It was, it was good. I haven't been tattooed since pre COVID. Really? So uh, like actually, no, actually, no, sorry. My bad. I did get tattooed about a year ago just for my buddy's name that passed away from work. Actually, I didn't remember that till now. But yeah, so he drew up this rad skull, which we showed you. And uh, it's all like, I don't know, broken teeth. And I don't know, it's cool. So uh, it was it was weird getting tattooed, like mm-hmm. for a longer time than 30 minutes. Right. Um, but uh, how long? So how long did you Dude, sit he for? he banged it out, honest to God. Under Are we talking two, under, under two, two hours? hours? That's tight. Like, just like, rah, yeah. rah. <laughs> like, it was good. That's how Sam, like, you know, like the guy on the front of my shin yeah. that Sam Smith did? That's what she did. She banged that out in like under two hours. And I still get complimented on that tattoo. And people are like, Sweet. that's a beautiful tattoo. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's never been touched up. Sweet. And it looks like, that's it awesome. looks like the day she had done it. Yeah, it does. That's it's one crisp. of my favorite tattoos. Crispy. It means crispy, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, how about your Saturday? <laughs> My Saturday. So I was looking for you on the highway when I was driving back. What time I know were you, you driving said, back? Well, you told me in secret, well, not in secret, but you're like, okay, I'm picking up blah, blah, blah at 430 and then we're going to hit the road. So I'm like, okay. I was No, dri- he, he was driving to my house and then we left. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. knew it was like somewhere around that well, time. Well, I told, yeah, like I told him, I was like, I, cause he asked me like, what time do you want to leave? I was like, I want to leave by minimum 430. Right. But that changed. We oh. left earlier oh. because okay. of another good okay. well, you fun got, okay. reason. Yeah, yeah. So I think we left probably like, – he got to my house about quarter to four. Okay. I think we left at like 3.55. So we were on the road by 4 o'clock for nice. sure. The reason we left so early is because I wanted to grab dinner before – the game because yep. we went to the, uh, the so you had the reason for your trip yeah we went to the Oilers Flames game in uh, Edmonton it was my first time going to the arena um, it was so much fun I'm an Oilers fan he's a Calgary fan we'll get into that in a little bit but I was looking up uh, play I so you've been looking up places to eat in Edmonton because there's places that we potentially want to go and check out the two of us and then I was looking up hey I want to find somewhere to eat. When I go there, like just to grab dinner quick yeah, before yeah. we go, yeah. And I just typed in like sandwich places in Edmonton because yeah. I was trying to look for that one that your friend had said, the one that was something in donuts. And I right. was like, okay, I want to try to find that one. Yeah, I didn't find that one, but okay. what I found, yeah, is there's a sandwich place called Earl of Sandwich. Oh yeah, in Vegas. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's in Edmonton. Oh, okay. There's, I was blown up. Yeah, like it popped up and I was like, that can't be right. Yeah. It was like Earl of Sandwich closed and like said the location. I'm like, that, they, that cannot be right. Mm. There's no way there's an Earl of Sandwich in Edmonton. There's an Earl of Sandwich in Edmonton. Crazy. In the South Commons area. Okay. So it's like as you're coming into Edmonton on the right-hand side. Sweet. Super easy to get to. You know where the Ikea is? Yeah. And I'm, yeah, it's right yeah. by there. Okay. And uh, Krista and I talk about Earl of Sandwich all the time where it's like sometimes she's just like, I'm like, what do you want for dinner? She's like, Earl of Sandwich. Just like randomly. As a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a joke. Now it's less of a joke because it's like, all right, like I'll take you to Earl of Sandwich because yeah, it's you two go, hours down the road. Yeah, yeah, it's two go. hours down the road. Skip the dishes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I told my friend that I went to the so game. So has with. he been? No, he had never oh, been okay. before. He didn't even know what it was. Because that's just, like a Vegas staple when we go. We're like Earl of Sandwich. Earl of Sandwich, yeah, and it's in Planet Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but there's also – there's one in uh, – there's one at Disney in, in California. Okay. And there's one in Orlando too, I I mean, think. that makes sense. Edmonton? Nope. No, Edmonton <laughs> – but that's the thing. I looked on there. I looked on Earl of Sandwich's website. There's two locations in Canada. There's one in Edmonton and one in Winnipeg. Yeah. It makes no sense. Chains do that. I look, know. Look at Chick Fil A. They came to Calgary at the airport. I know. They, they had a terrible location. What? Yeah, it didn't. Not make it. Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, if you're doing Western Canada, you choose Calgary at the airport. Mm -hmm. Anyways, they seem to have weird, weird choices. When it so, comes to that. Um, and apparently, Edmonton's opening a second location downtown. Okay, so, it so is they're going to have. That's good. Oh, yeah, well, I asked the the girl when we got there. I said, "Well, how long has this been open?" She said, "We opened in June, so like four okay. months or whatever." Oh, okay. I was like, "All right, cool." So new. it's brand new. Yeah, yeah. Um, I ordered my favorite, which is the Hawaiian barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, it's got chicken, ham, Swiss cheese, barbecue sauce, and pineapple on it. Sounds great. Yeah. So good. Uh, he ordered the holiday cranberry, or sorry, holiday holiday turkey, and it's turkey stuffing cranberry. Yeah. Uh, all of this on a sandwich and he was like eating it and he's a very cynical pessimistic person in general so like getting him to try new things or things that um, it's always kind of a gamble whether or not he, whether if he likes it he's going to be like yeah it was fine but if he doesn't like it he was going to be like he's just he's going to say, like say he's something going to ruin the whole day about not, it. Not, he's, not that I'm it's going to ruin I'm the kidding. whole day but he's just kind of he's going to be like yeah, like, whatever like it doesn't it. yeah like Whatever, Quiznos is better or whatever. He's eating this sandwich and he's looking at me and he's like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is so good. And yeah. I'm like, I'm blown away because I've never – I don't think I've ever had a reaction right. like that from him for something where I was, I'm just like, holy crap, okay. He really likes this. He's like, this is, He's like, this puts Quiznos to shame. He's like, this is amazing. Yeah, it's a real sandwich. I'm like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> so I – was super happy that like what he ordered worked out worked out for yeah. him. I was like perfect. And so I was how did your sandwich taste? Mine in was perfect. It was perfect to Vegas style. It was perfect. Okay, sometimes there's a difference. I know, and I was worried about that. Yeah. No, I was like tending. I was sending Krista photos, and she was like, because I woke up the next morning after I had found out that they had Earl of Sandwich. And I said to her, I was like, I have to tell you something. And she's like, okay. And I was like, you're going to be so jealous. I was like, you're either going to be really upset or you're going to be kind of stoked. And she was like, that's <laughs> what really confusing. <laughs> but okay. She was like, just tell me. And I was like, <laughs> I I was like, I know what I'm getting for dinner. And she was like, what? What the? F what, what are you, what talking? Are you talking about? She was like, this is all so stupid. And I was like, I'm getting Earl of Sandwich. And then there was this moment of confusion where she was like, what? Yeah. She was like, is there one in Edmonton? I'm like, yep. So anyway. That was dinner. Great. Earl of Sandwich. I was super stoked on that. Then we um, bombed over to the arena. <clears throat> Pardon me. I, I lost my voice a little bit from yeah, you're screaming asking. at the game. You sound like game. Marge's sisters. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it. I, yeah, I know. That was, <laughs> I was going to do, how oh, me. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so we bombed over to the arena. And the nice thing with the new arena is you can book parking ahead of time. Right. Um, whether you're in the parkade or wherever you're at, because um, there's a bunch of parking lots and parkades around the arena. So it's all uh, just predicated on where you're parked. So I just picked the closest one and, like, the most expensive one, which was, like, $21. It's not that bad, though. It's really? not horrible. You split that with someone's 10 bucks each. I just made him pay for it because I'm, like, I bought the tickets and I, oh, yeah, like, fair. I made it. He paid 20 bucks for parking to go to this game. Yeah, That's perfect. not that bad for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But 
um, that becomes important later in the story. <laughs> okay. Because you know how hard it is. Like when uh, you're leaving like a Flames game and you know how hard it is to leave Victoria Park. We'll talk about that in a bit. So we go, we park, um, and like we find the parking easily. Then we take an elevator up to the second floor of this building that we're in, that we're parked in. And then it's literally just like one plus 15 across this street and then another plus 15 across that street. Sweet. And we're in the arena. Nice. Didn't have to walk out on the street at all. It was Perfect. great. So I, in my head, I'm like, this is going to be awesome for the winter. Oh, yeah. When it's minus 8 million. Yeah. yeah. Going to games for in sure. the winter. Great. Don't have to worry Can about I wear it. my shorts. I'm literally going to wear shorts <laughs> yeah, to every yeah, game. Yeah. Um, and flip flops. <laughs> but... So we go, we're like going in, and I'm like so excited. This is so cool. We get into Ford Hall, which is like the the front um, main entrance that everybody you can walk in there, and then they've got the gates to yeah. that you have to go through to yeah. do the ticketing or whatever. And it's all gated off, and they've got like um, uh, areas you have to walk through where it's like vaccine check or whatever, right? Okay. And then you go through the gate, and then it's the security check where okay. you go through the metal detector, Makes and sense. then. You go through and they check your tickets. Okay. So it's like three levels of fucking security that you have to go through to get into the arena. We got there early enough that like the fo that Ford Hall was packed full of people, and the gates weren't open because the doors were seven. So we w and we got there. It's like six thirty or something. Okay. So we kind of wandered around and just like looked. Went there was like a little pop up store in the Ford Hall area. We kind of went and looked at that, and then just like kind of waited. Then they opened the doors, and it was <laughs> Murphy's Law, of course. You're going to get in behind somebody. It, it happened on Friday night. Because remember, I went to that Lobster Fest thing at Canadian Brew House, too. Okay, honestly. It was terrible, but. One of the funniest videos I saw was Mel Mel's video of you. Oh, cracking open the oh, lobster. And you're just like, you're so out of your element. In yeah, like, it was not fun. You were like, what is this creature on my plate? The, well, and, and the like, funny thing is Krista likes lobster. <laughs> you like dig the tail out yeah. of it. Like, it was so hilarious. Krista likes lobster, and she tried some of lobster. She was like, that was not good lobster. And I'm like, no, of course not. It was Canadian oh. Brew House. Canadian Brew House has good food for the most part, but like not for that. Anyway, it was expensive too. It was like 50 bucks a ticket and you got one. It was no, anyway, not my, not the, at Lobster Fest, we were trying to get in the door and they're doing vaccine checks everywhere. And the people that walked in just ahead of us that like the guy held the door for us, but his entire family walked in before Krista and I, and then we were standing behind them and there were six or eight of them or something. They were like checking their vaccine cards or whatever. And then it got to one person in their party who didn't have the thing or whatever. There was a problem with it or something. So then there's eight people standing there. And all of a sudden there's a lineup forming behind us for people to get in. And we're all standing so there like, the okay, yeah, like move. okay, like get out. Like, can yeah. you just deal with this outside? Because yeah, obviously you're not all out, getting in. You're not all getting in. So or go seven of you go sit down. So, of course, <laughs> the same thing happens at the game oh. at the vaccine checkpoint where they're like uh, – there was like a problem with somebody's thing. So we're standing – so it's like moving really fast, and then it gets to the people just in front of us, and then we're standing there. And it's like, okay, this is dumb. So then you're standing there, and, like, all the lines are moving, and you're like, hey, oh, my God. Finally, they get – so they – I, what, whatever it was, I think they just didn't have it on their phone. They had a paper copy, and that wasn't – I don't know. It was something stupid. So then they get let in. Great. We go through the metal detector. It's all good. We get to the ticketing point. Roger's Place is all digital tickets now. And there's still people trying to like, like using barcodes on their phones and the stupid um, – they're trying to scan the barcodes mm -hmm. at the thing and it's not working. So, of course, we get to the ticketing points, move, 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 and the people literally in front of my friend and I, there was five of them. And she's trying to scan one barcode. Fifteen minutes. I'm not kidding. We're standing there, and the whole time, there's two lines funneling to one person ticketing, and she's like trying so hard to like, <laughs> like look at, get the ticket off this one guy's phone, and I'm like, what the hell? like? Why didn't you? It tells you right on the uh, the like my ticket manager thing to add it to your Apple Wallet, so it just be you know like when you buy something People. with your 
I know they're dumb. People are so stupid. But when you add, you know, when you buy something with your yes. phone, you like double tap and yes. then you like bling. Yeah. That's what the ticket winds up being. So when I open the ticket on my phone, it's now, um, it's like hold close to the reader and the lady. So it's like ready to be read. I exactly. Understand. So yeah, yeah. instead of scanning a barcode, it literally like, I like opened it and she was like, oh, and like touched her thing. Okay. Yeah. Next ticket, touch the thing. Yeah. Boom. We were in. Yeah. So it was like, oh, we're just like standing there and like. Waiting for like the whole, like this, as the crowd's moving through and it's like, oh my God, people. My biggest pet peeve about that is that people don't read and just like, come on, like get with the times and <laughs> add the, add the tickets to your, your Apple like phone wallet. Like it's not wallet. working on your Nokia flip phone, bro. Exactly. Then we just kind of, Miller and I just kind of bombed around and like looked at the arena. The, the arena is really nice, but there's not a lot in it. Not a lot of concessions. Huh. Um, it's 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 sparse for what it is. Huh. It was weird. We both kind of felt That's like a strange. Way yeah, to like I felt it. like there was gonna. Well, you know how like so. Um, because like the, in the Saddle Dome, it is packed on both sides like of the concourse. Everywhere you go, there is something on either side of the concourse in the sa- in the saddle. Yeah. There is, it's just like wall to wall concessions. Yeah. One after another, after totally. another, after and another. And there's Pizza 73. Yeah. There's like a sandwich place. Yeah. There's like all these Tons different of things. Stuff. Yeah. In Roger's place, I felt like, okay, there's a Pizza 73. And then there's like nothing. Huh. And then there's like the white mud, whatever, but that has the same stuff as like the other one. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you have like two Pizza 73s. <coughs> and then you have like a couple concessions that have like beer and hot dogs and burgers and like, there wasn't a whole – I was expecting like a little bit – I guess I was expecting a little bit more in terms of concession. Yeah. Like and it well, just – Well, you would think with like the world today and how like new age and everything is and how we like to have like amenities and like, you know, things that we that we can pump our money into. And you yeah. think that like once you go into an arena like that, they want to trap you and make you spend as much money as possible. Which they thus are. But giving you yeah. as many options as possible. Like I'm surprised that it's not more woke in the fact that like you can go to a dumpling place and then you can go over here and have a poutine place and you can go have but that's a the, noodle. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? To like open it. I'm not saying that that might necessarily work per se, but I'm surprised it wasn't more options like so, that. Well, but I think there is though that's the thing and I I just didn't know how to like because I saw one at a certain point I saw a dude walk by with what looked like a noodle bowl mm. and I was like where did you get that like yeah. I don't under I'm like I'm not seeing where right because other than the pizza 73 ones and the beer things all the concessions look the same so you really have to like you're, like look, you're reading the menu almost yeah to you see, have like, to like look really close to other? exactly right. and I was like that's weird huh other than that, that was the only gripe I had with it. Other than that, the ra- the arena is beautiful. Cool. I like the way it's built. So we go to my, how are your seats? Because this is the first time sitting in your this seats. This is the first. The seats were actually. I was super worried because I had read online that some people were like, "Ah, the upper bowl is really uncomfortable." Oh, okay. This and that. I was not uncomfortable at all. Sweet. They are. Okay. So the way the the Saddle Dome's built like this. Yeah. The Rogers Arena is built like this. It's built straight up. So when you're sitting. We're basically sitting at the very top of the arena because my seats are row 11. And the, pardon me, the top uh, bowl is 12 rows. So we're like one row. at the top, yeah. When you're sitting there, it feels like you're kind of not on top of the ice. You have a great view of the ice um, from where we are. But it also feels, I don't know, he was complaining. He was like, I don't know, man, these feel like really high up. And I feel like where we are, we're further back from the upper bowl in Calgary and this. Huh. And I said, I don't think we're not, I said, we're not further back. We may be higher up, but we're not further back because of the way it's built. In Calgary, if we were in upper bowl, we would be further back from the ice, but we would be lower down. Yeah. Then, Although saddle them short, that's why. Well, it's just, it's all relative, right? So he's sure. like looking at the ice and he's going, I don't know if I, he's, He's trying to convince me that he thinks where my seats are, are like press level in the saddle dome, and I'm like, "There's no way. Like yeah, we're no way. we're maybe like upper upper two hundreds in the saddle dome, not press level. Right? There's no way because like I'm like I'm like, dude, I've sat press level and it's like press level's high. Um. So again, he's always got something to bitch about when it comes to anything, and I'm just like, I'm trying to enjoy this. this is my first time in the arena. I'm really excited. Um, so 
it's great. They have like their intro video that's like welcome back fans. Um the energy it was that okay. The building is so loud. It's so loud. Um and even and even he said that. He was like, I I guess acoustically the way it's built, it's he's like, it's really loud in here. Huh. I'm like, yep. Like almost too much. I was having fun. Or it was like it was okay. I it was it was fine. Okay. I I mean I was losing my mind because I was having a yeah, yeah, blast. Yeah. Um but the game starts. Um and well, even before the game started, so when he got to my house, he had brought his flames jersey with me with him. And I told him because when I go to the Saddle Dome, I don't wear an opposing team's jersey. Just because I don't want to bring I don't like I just don't want any kind of like uh, negative interaction at the because some hockey fans can be shitty, sure. especially when they're drunk. Yeah, you add alcohol into the mix, and then you add in the pandemic on top of that. Where so people wait, are, you wanted him to wear an Oilers jersey? No, I didn't want him to wear anything. I oh. did kind of say I did say to him at my house. I was like, Hey, I have a McDavid jersey you could wear. Like you could go in disguise, like I do at the Saddle Dome, because I do wear my Flames jersey. I know. To I've been the to, yeah, yeah. We've been to a game. But I'll cheer for the other team in the Flames jersey. I think it's hilarious. Um, so, and he was like, no, 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 no. Like, fuck that. I'm wearing – he was like, I'm wearing my Flames jersey. And I asked him I, – I asked him to – I can't remember if I asked him after the game or before the game. I was like, how many other NHL arenas have you ever been to? And he was like, well, I've been to Rexall. Because he had obviously been to the Saddle Dome so many times. And he's like, I've been to Rexall. And I was like, okay, so you've been to no <laughs> NHL arenas then because – Rex saw like you, we're talking like ten years ago. Like right. anyway, so I was like you. I like I've been to Madison Square Garden. I've been to Toronto. I've been to um, Calgary, Edmonton. Like I've been to a few. And um, again, I don't wear opposing teams' jerseys because it's just not worth it okay. to me. Other people do. That's fine. To me, I just don't. I'm not necessarily going to draw that kind of attention. Okay. Um. So. There, there's, of course, like little chirps here and there for like Calgary sucks. And then at a certain point, the crowd is chanting like Calgary or like, go Oilers, go Calgary sucks. And it's just like, OK. And he's just like, well, they need a better chant. And I was like, dude, what did you expect? We're in oil country. Yeah, but you can't get butt hurt. You're no, no, game. exactly. And you then you just got to like go with it, man. Yeah. Well, he's not. It wasn't butt hurt, but well, like, he was I mean. just kind of like, 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 obviously, he wants to see his team win, yeah. especially he wants to see them win in that building. They weren't going to win. Um, so the first period ended at two nothing. Second period, I think, ended three. I want to say three two. Maybe it was four two. I can't remember. Is it and, packed? Oh, it was sold out. Is it packed? The game was sold out okay. for sure. So it was like loud as hell because like every it, the, loud as hell. So you're 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 putting like however many thousand people. I think it holds eighteen five okay. something like that. You're cramming all these people during the pandemic, and there's people that are like angry and. You know, for, because of the pandemic and all this stuff. And, like, just real t – t at a certain point in the first period, there was a lot of, like, tension on the ice because it's a Battle of Alberta game. Yeah. So did you watch the game? No. Oh, you should have. There was a – there was – dude, Rasmus Anderson headbutted Kyler Yamamoto. <laughs> he got fined $5,000 after the game for that. But anyway, when that <laughs> happened, I'm now on high alert because he's wearing a Flames jersey, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if a fight breaks out on the ice and then suddenly some drunk guy wants to, like, jump over and start beating him up because he's wearing a Flames jersey. Because he's not, like, chirping, but he's just kind of, like, throwing out, like, what he thinks are funny comments every once in a while. And I'm just like, shut up. Like, stop talking. Ooh, go, let's go. Like, I'm – so now I'm kind of concerned because of the – because of the the target he's put on on himself, there was still a lot. Of, there was a lot more Flames jerseys than I thought there was going to oh, be. Oh, there's always Flames fans in for sure. Area. There's lots but, of Oilers fans here, like you. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't live in this city. But close enough. You know what I mean, right? So yeah. it's kind of um, at the, we get there was a like the first period felt way more tense than the rest of the game did because once. When it was still 0-0, zero, zero, it was kind of like, ooh, and they're starting to get, like, real heated on the ice, and, like, Cassian was trying to fight somebody, and, like, people are, like, they're hitting each other left and right. It was kind of like, okay, like, things are starting to get tense, and I was kind of, like, laughing it off, like, all right, this is fun. Yeah. Oh, I hope nothing happens, and I hope... Um, so we get into the second period. So uh, 
first period ends 2 nothing, great. We get into the second period. It's like, okay, tensions have relieved a little bit because, like, the Oilers are up 2 nothing. This is okay. And then I think they go up 3 nothing, and then it's 3-1. It's like, okay, like, we're still in control of this game. Then it's 3-2. It's like, all right. Uh, like, Calgary scored. It was 3-2. It was like, ooh, I really hope they're not about to blow this lead and, like, turn this game around. 26 seconds after Calgary had scored that second goal, yes, Apuliarvi, like, skates down the ice, almost a breakaway, snipes one past Markstrom, and the the place goes insane. Right, because you just... And we're like, coffin. oh, yeah, we're like, oh, my God, like, yes. And it was so, like... It was just unreal seeing, it, like, live hockey again, like, just the energy. And, like, literally, I was losing my voice by the end of the game because I was screaming so much and having so much fun. Yeah. And then in the third period, like, they pulled the goalie, and I think with, like, a minute and a half left, um, uh, McDavid got an empty net, which was he got a hat trick in that game. Sweet. So it's like he puts it away. All of a sudden, hats are flying, and right. it's like, oh, man, music. The music's so loud. It's just so much fun. You threw your hat, right? No, I took my hat. This I was wearing this. So Miller's like, throw your hat. And I'm like, no. <laughs> took it off, and I'm like holding it. I'm like, please, nobody throw my hat. I'm like, I just bought this hat. Um, and then, you know, so it's like, okay, the boy, they won the game. Like, we, I think we jumped up out of the seats to, like, walk out with, like, five seconds left or whatever. And we're like, yeah, let's go. Like, we're, it's good. Got to try to get out of here. And <laughs> the... Level of like, it's like, okay, the Oilers won the game. But there was just this like, we're walking out. We're trying to get out of the arena and there's so many people. And there's only like three escalators to get down. So you're, pardon me, there's three escalators to get down. So you're kind of trapped on the upper bowl until most of the people make their way down and leave. And the whole time... There's so many people that are like like Oilers fans that are drunk that are just like chirping him for like wearing his oh, jersey sure. and like what all this and so suddenly he's just like he's all pissed off because he's like oh like what the hell like why are they he was like Oilers fans are the worst blah 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 just like talking shit about how like they do this and then there was one guy that almost got in his face and I got in between them I guess and like kind of he was like walking behind us I guess like saying shit to Miller and I'm like super on high alert of just like making sure that nothing's going to happen because I'm like I'm going to make sure <laughs> it's like World War whatever World War Oilers and I'm like I'm going to get you back to your kids you know and he's like the ally or the opposing <laughs> soldier I'm like I'm going to get you back to your the kids saving even Private though I, Miller Saving Private Miller so um, that there was only like really like one tense moment where he really f- felt like he had to be on high alert with some drunk guy um but it, like, ruined the whole night for him where, like, we got back to the truck and he was, like, rant. He was just so pissed. He was, like, I can't believe it, blah, blah, blah. And he was, like, I've never had that happen, like, at, like, this, like going to games and stuff. Like, it's so stupid. And I was, like, of course you games. haven't. You go to Calgary yeah. games. Like, what are you talking about? You're wearing. Your home team. Exactly. I'm, yeah. like, I'm, like, Miller, I've had that happen. And he was like, well, it's just that doesn't happen at the Saddle Dome. I'm like, yes, it does. It won million. Oh my percent God, does. of course it does. You if don't I'm think wearing flame fans aren't chirping Edmonton Oilers fan jerseys. And I'm trying to like, explain this to him. Or where Vancouver. Like, I've yeah. seen people, I've seen Flames fans fight Vancouver fans yeah. outside of the game after. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm never he was like, I'm never wearing an opposing team's jersey yeah, to another Yeah, You're like, arena. that's what I told I'm you. I'm like, that's what I was trying to tell you Whatever. before we left. Some people don't learn until they go through it. Yeah. And he, and he was like, well, you didn't explain. It. I was like, Miller, I tried to in the nicest way possible where I wasn't just like, don't wear your jersey. And I You're did like, kind of pen and paper. This is you. Yeah. And I did. Well, and he was like, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. And I'm like, I'm like, why do you think I wear a Flames jersey to Flames games? Yeah. So anyway, um, he's like super like just like rattled. He was like, oh, like uh, that was not fun. And like, oh, like that kind of ruined the whole thing for me. And, blah, blah. and I was like, I told you not to for one and for two. Like, I'm like, I don't feel bad for you because no. I, like, what did you it expect? Just sucks that, it just, that sucks that, A, that was his first experience, like, you know, going to that 
the stadium with you mm-hmm. and like the arena. And it just sucks that that was his first experience, which also like bled into your first experience a little yep. bit. As much as you had fun and your team won and it was a cool experience, you're now dealing with upset Miller because he did. Yeah, but I mean, we I'm had, not saying that no, he no, ruined no. the trip. I'm no, not saying he didn't. that. No, no, no. But no. I'm just saying that like, you know, when someone has a bad trip, sometimes it leaks over into For other sure. people's. And it wasn't the experience that you both wanted at the end of the of day. Course. So, so, so hopefully you learned something. Oh, I, I think he did. <laughs> not you, but. No, no, no. Okay. I, I think he did. So we get back to the truck and we're sitting in the truck and to leave that parkade, because we parked on P2, we're in the truck and all the aisles in the parkade are full of vehicles and no one is moving. So we're just sitting there for 25 minutes and no cars are moving. You know, so you can't even back out because there's people I, behind there's you. There's a car parked behind. I'm in my parking space. I wasn't even in the aisle. I'm literally in no, my parking. No, that's park- what I mean. And so you're sitting in your space and there's just traffic behind yep. you in the aisle. So I'm like, uh, thankfully I'm not uber claustrophobic because this would be a nightmare. Because at a certain point I was like, uh, I'm. he's like, this is dumb. And I'm like, well... <laughs> Yes. I'm like, it is dumb, but I mean, like, really, I was like, Victoria Park's no better. Not at all. When you're trying to leave a Flames game. Like it's, it's at least one ways. At least. At least it's one ways, and you're on surface streets. Yeah. So I was like, okay, but. That might even actually be better. Tiny. Only the fact that you're outside. True. I, oh, I, I kind of equated it to Victoria Park because it's like, okay. Yeah, we were stuck underground, but once we did finally start moving, it kind of – it was just like not fast, but it was kind of like we did kind of move. Okay. Well, at like a decent pace. At a decent pace, and then at a certain point, they kind of directed uh, a bunch of us to another uh, exit. Okay. And so we didn't exit out the entrance we came in. We exited out, like, the back of the building. Okay. And it was like as soon as I pulled out of the building, there was nothing. No oh. cars, nothing. Huh. I'm like, what? So that was all congestion of just getting out of the building. What I think happened is there's people with wands directing people and moving cars and stuff like that. And what I think happens is the person standing in the parkade at P2 is having everyone in P2 stop and they're letting everyone out of P1. But you're also dealing with thousands of people walking on the streets. So vehicles can't pull out if there's like a steady stream of like 200 people. So I think what happened is they were like trying to get everyone out of P1, but also get rid of the people off the streets. And then once P1 was pretty clear, then they started letting P2 go. And then by the time we got out, I had to wait for like five people. And then I got on the road and it was just like, boom. Okay, cool. We just... um, Started driving out of downtown. It's weird that that's not more of a factor when designing a new arena. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you think that maybe there would be more attention paid to, like, hey, how can we ease the flow of traffic when there is this massive bombardment of people that are trying to leave all at the same time? To maybe, like, try and focus yeah. the people walking in a different area. So, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just surprised that there wasn't, like, more forethought it put into that. Uh, as it's tough, though, right? Because it's kind of like, how do you, how do you, how you do could. you? You could. I'm just saying you for could. sure. Well, and I had either said, build the road a different well, way. See, There's ways I, you could engineer it where it could flow better. What I said to Miller was, uh, like they do in Victoria Park after the Flames games, cops are out there directing traffic. Right. And I said, well, you know, it, cops could help direct this too. Like and totally. It, but the problem with Rogers Place is Stampede Park is like its own little. It's like on the edge of downtown, and you're right. It's one ways, so they can direct traffic a lot easier. Rogers Place, where it is. There's lights and multiple directions on It's really all in the middle the of everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like he's like the manpower they would have to throw at that every single game to direct traffic is just not worth it. Yeah, fair. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's that's a good point. So that one, that option's kind of – but you're right. There's probably like – they could have built underground tunnels yeah. that you could drive out of. Like yeah. out if you're like – if it's like, oh, you're heading – you're leaving downtown, drive out yeah. this tunnel. Or instead yeah. of putting the new arena in the middle of the universe in downtown Edmonton. Put it out in Leduc. Yeah. No, but like not even Leduc, but like let's put it on the outside of the city yeah. where the city will eventually grow around it. Well, But no, like yeah. just outside where we have the land where we can build roads, overpasses, under plus 97. So and like, do you know what I mean? So that's kind of, that's where 
I, I, I you know you have it, the room in the I, area to be able to design it to how you want it. I know exactly what you're saying, and that's kind of what Rexall was. Like, you've been to Rexall. Yeah. Rexall was not on the edge of town, but it was, like, in a further out spot, had a big parking lot. Like, it was yeah. – it was, that was kind of the – the point of Rexall, and they could have absolutely knocked down Re- – well, not knocked it down, but they could have, like, built another arena like out in that. beside it or behind it Kind or of whatever. what they're doing with, yeah, yeah. with the, the Saddle, Saddle Dome, Dome like, yeah. for the new arena out here. Yeah. Absolutely, they could have done the same thing. But the reason they built it in downtown Edmonton is because they want to revitalize their downtown core. Because if they don't have the, the arena in the Ice District, Edmonton doesn't have a whole lot of draw to – people going downtown and like That's building funny. up any kind of nightlife. Cause I went downtown after my tattoo on Saturday. Cause my buddy, mm-hmm. Dan Soda, he owns a, a business called river Valley printing shout yep. out. He does like all the prints for all the tattoo. Well, does all the prints for all the, he does prints for tattoo artists and that's his business. And it's in downtown or on the edge of downtown Edmonton. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to go see him. Cause he was having a pop-up that day in proximity, in proximity to the arena. How close? Um, like, I did you don't see it? No, no. Oh, okay. No, I don't know in proximity to how This close. is only the first time I've ever been down or second time I've ever been downtown Edmonton. Me too. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't I don't know downtown at all. Me so I don't either. know. But I went down there, I found him. He was having a pop-up because it was his 10-year anniversary. Gotcha. I thought I'm in town, I'm gonna go see him. He's a really good homie. Anyways, me driving into downtown Edmonton from the tattoo shop, which was like on White Ave. Yeah. So it's like, you know, kind of our 17th into downtown. I got there and I swear to God, it was a ghost town. Yeah. There was no people walking. There was no cars on the streets. Yeah. There was like, I sat at like three sets of lights where there was no traffic. I was just sitting there like, and this is middle of, this is three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Yeah. So I'm like, the comparison is so much different when it is like Calgary's core isn't necessarily hopping like it would be in Vancouver. No, but it's oh, busy. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like yeah, Van- yeah. Other cities like Toronto and Vancouver, they have really busy, active downtown cores, you know? Yeah. Calgary does, but not so much anyway, but more than Edmonton. So it was cool. Yeah. No, and I'm not surprised by that at all. So that's exactly why they built the arena. Okay. In downtown Edmonton was to build up that downtown core. Weird. There's a casino. Uh, there's a, we wanted to go look at the casino, but it, it, it there's signs on it that says it's uh, temporarily closed. Literally, like we're in Ford Hall, like about to go into the game, and then there's a casino like just right there. Like it's all part huh. of the all the hotels are part of it. Like it's all it's all just like one pa- complete package. Huh. But it is difficult. So in my head, I'm like, oh, okay. So if the game ends at like 10.30, 10.45, I was like, realistically, I can be home by like 1 o'clock. 1, 1 1.30, right? We didn't – I got to my house at like 10 – 20 after 2 because we had to stop. I didn't fill up the truck before we left, and I had to stop in Red Deer and get gas. Okay. Um, And then for him, he has to drive all the way home too. So he didn't get home till like 3 in the morning. And he's got three kids, right? So he's – Tired guy on Sunday. Yep. He was like, tomorrow's going to suck. And I was like, yes, it is. But he wanted to come with me. (laughs) So I don't think he's going to be going to another game. At least not at (laughs) – at least if he goes to one at Roger's place, he's not going to wear a Flames jersey. Yeah, he's going to be like, he ain't going to be wearing that jersey. No. Hell no. I had a really good time, though. Good. It was really – I – and even the – even the – the parking thing at the end or like trying to leave at the end, that didn't really bother me at all. Cause I was like, I'm safe. I'm in my truck. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. I don't care if it takes me 20 minutes to get yeah. out of here. And I know I'm going to have to do that a whole bunch. Well, I'm going to look for a different parking lot. Cause I think I'm going to the game tomorrow. Uh, but I was just like, you know what? Like whatever. It's not the end of the world. I had a really good time overall. And I don't know. I don't know if I would buy season tickets again next year though. Because it does, it's a lot of effort. Oh, it's a lot of that's effort. That's a little flippity do. It's what funny because like, I know because it's like I had a I had a really good time, but it's just like it's re. It's not stressful. It's kind of stressful, but it, but it's because it's like I know the games I want to go to, and then I know the ones that I have to like sell in order to like break even on my season, so that I'm not like none of them go to waste. Like I'm not I'm not not looking to make money on my season at all. I'm just trying to like offset the cost of like. Um, the games I can't go to because I don't live in the city. Yep. And uh, I mean, it almost would make sense for your time and your effort to really almost get Calgary season tickets. Yeah. And then just go to every Edmonton game. 
I mean, especially after this season uh, of you having these tickets, you're going to be going to so many games over the next six, eight months that you're going to go to Rex Hall, or, sorry, uh, to Rogers so many times that you're going to be like, okay, I've done that for a season. It was good. And then you can go back and buy tickets if you want to ever go back. But you should get Flames t- Well, the, okay. So the thing is, the, what I'm confused, so like the thing is with that, I was surprised I was able to buy season tickets. Oh, 100%. Because most teams have had a waiting list for a long time. But I think COVID is what screwed all that up. Yeah. And I think they're really pushing because a lot of people gave up their season tickets yeah. because they don't want to go. They don't want to go. They don't want to get vaccinated yeah. or they don't want to go. So right. they were like, I'm done. So that's why I was able to buy season tickets. And now that I've bought them, I'm kind of like, ooh, all right. The re- the resale market in both – in Cal- like I have a friend who has, has – had, he's had Flames tickets for many years. Um, like season tickets, you mean, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the one you think of. Um, it's a different friend. And he, I was talking to him about it where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to offload like the majority of my season. And he was like, dude, the resale market right now is just like, it's awful. Also, Calgary f- season tickets are more expensive uh, than Oilers season and tickets. And they did call you after and you were like, sorry. Oh, yeah, because so I, put, I had put my the name down. Of the list well, yeah, because I had put my name down for both. Right, and I know. Oilers, like, I just bought Edmonton. Yeah, Oilers Edmonton came tickets. up first and I was like, sorry. Oh, well, yeah, it was bought, just timing. Mm-hmm. I think I would have bought Calgary ones because I could I could literally go to every single game. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's all good, man. We'll see what happens next year. Overall, I had a really really good time. That's good. But uh, yeah, I think I've done <laughs> like forty five minutes on this story. What <laughs> what else? Uh, what else did you? It was do? good. It was great. I had a good time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's uh, no. One thing, okay, I wanted to ask you about, um, there's a couple things I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Are you watching American Crime Story Impeachment? No. Which is the third season. Okay. No, I want to. Yeah, because you watched the first season, the OJ one, right? Loved it. So good. That Did was you watch- my teenagehood yes. in news and media so good. right there. Like, yeah. we watched the trial in school. Yeah. I believe it. They shut the lights off, brought the TV on the stand in, and was like, we're going to watch this. And I was like, this is school. Yeah. And we're watching, like, O.J. Simpson trial in school. I love, I loved it. And I thought everybody who who was in that was phenomenal. Oh, they were great. I tried to watch the Versace one. I did, too. I think I, I got one. I could wa- not yeah. get into it. The characterization was good. The, the actors were good. I couldn't get into the story. Like, no. I understand it's real life, but I just... I had no empathy for anybody. Like, I felt bad for Versace, obviously, but, like, I just couldn't get Yeah, but you weren't there. Could, yeah. Like no, it was, I remember it happening, but oh, it okay. wasn't like, oh, See, okay. I don't remember. I don't know anything about Versace that. Versace got shot. Like, okay. Like, I'm not, you yeah. know, like, I don't that's know. terrible, yeah. but had no, like, I don't know. That's exactly, but that's the reason I didn't watch it is because I, I started to kind of watch it. I was like, oh, yeah, like, a lot of good actors in this, and, like, it looks, it's done really well, but I'm like, I don't know anything about this. So yeah. it's kind of, it didn't really do anything for me. So, but I want to, and I have looked for. So I have a Cody box. Yeah, and so I was looking for it on the Cody box, and I can't. It's my box is messed up, so I have yeah, to. Re- yeah. I got to re- get the new program so that I can get access to it. Oh, basically. okay. So, but so it's on my watch list. I was so excited for. I'm not. Gonna I've ruin. heard phenomenal things about it, though. Honestly, I, I'm not gonna. I won't ruin no, anything fine. for you because obviously, tell me your I mean, opinion. It, tell oh yeah, I'll t- yeah, I'm gonna yeah, tell you my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a story we all know. Oh, 100. Anyway. percent Yeah. And there's things I didn't know about that story that are kind of coming okay. to light through the show. And yeah, I'm yeah. sure some of it is dramatized. Sure. Or dra- yeah, dra- dramatized. But also it's like, oh, I didn't know this. And like, oh, okay, that's yeah. good. You know. Um, and everybody that's in it is really good. Like, yeah. okay, so Beanie Feldstein. Okay. Um, like Jonah Hill's sister. Yeah. As Monica Lewinsky. Amazing. I've seen a side by side. It's she's, insane. She's killing it as Monica Lewinsky. She's. It's. I'm also like weirdly attracted to. She's Monica, cute though. She's cute. And as Monica hell. Lewinsky was cute. Though. She was. Oh, wait, well, like back in those. Still is though. She's still. Oh, a I haven't seen her recently. She's still a good looking. But woman. like when they were all like intern, I'm like, yeah, I can 100%. see why he got a blowjob from her. Like, but yeah, Beanie, uh, Beanie Feldstein as Monica Lewinsky into it. It's awesome. And like Eddie Falco as uh, as Hillary. Right? Oh. Yeah. Uh, That's a pretty I good think, casting. Yeah, but I think she's been in it like twice. Okay. And I don't even think they're really showing her face. 
So that might be so. And I don't know if that because we're like eight episodes. No, not eight. Maybe I don't know. We're pretty deep into it. Okay. Um, into the seat, like Chris and I've watched every episode because yeah. I bought it on iTunes. Okay. Um. Yeah. No, there hasn't been a whole lot of Hillary. Okay. Okay. A lot of Bill. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Clive Owen is playing Bill. Yeah. Bill Clinton, and he's doing a pretty good job. Honestly, if they had just cast Daryl Hammond as Bill Clinton, it would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, or like, I don't know, like, it's weird because when it's, when the series started and the first time you see Bill Clinton, um, I was like, oh, and I had to really look at him and be like, is that, in my head, I was like, is that Clive Owen? And then I looked it up and I'm sure, sure enough, it's Clive Owen. Now that I know it's Clive Owen, I can't see anybody else. Got you. Other than, cause yep. he's got a lot of makeup on to make yep. him look like Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. And he's doing a decent, like, Bill Clinton impression. But I'm, like, in my head, I'm kind of like, ah, maybe, like, they could have cast somebody else. Sarah Paulson. Yeah. As, uh, tr as Linda Tripp. Tripp, yeah. She's unrecognizable. Oh, yeah. As Sarah Paulson. Yeah, the fat suit on. She is Linda Tripp. Yeah. It is – Sarah Paulson is insane. insane. She's so good. Insane. And every time Linda Tripp is on – on TV, there's no part of me that's looking at her going, oh, that's Sarah Paulson. When Beanie is on screen, I'm going, I'm not looking at – it's weird. I have a friend who looks exactly like Beanie. Okay. So every time Beanie's on screen, I'm looking at Beanie going, oh, that's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> not Monica Lewinsky. So gotcha. it's kind of weird in that sense. But, oh, my God, Sarah Paulson is unbelievable Yeah. in that series. One of the biggest problems I've had with the series is that it just feels like we're now getting to, like, the really good stuff. Oh, shit. And it feels like... Seven episodes in? Eight yeah, episodes it, in? It, there's, there's a Damn, couple... they are making you wait. There's a couple episodes where not a lot happens, and then even the cliffhanger that they leave you on at the end of the episode, you're kind of like, okay, like, basically... The way I'm like, it would have made a really, really, really good two-hour movie. It didn't need to be an eight-hour series. Mm. That's the way I think it's six. I think we're six in, and there's two more or something. Got like you. It didn't need to be a full right season. Or maybe I think. a three-parter. Maybe three parts, <laughs> like a re, like a mini, like, like it a could good have, forty-five minute three-parter. It honestly, if they had made four episodes, it would have been so much better. Then there's been like some stuff where they're just it feels like they're holding on certain hmm. things too long, and there's certain things that they've introduced that just completely go away. That like, huh. like there was this like whole. I understand why they introduced it and why it would they played it up so much because it's the guy that initially broke the story. But it was like, why was that necessary? Like, why was his entire character development where you introduce him as like this person and then. Like, it, it just, like, he had a whole story arc for no reason, it felt <laughs> like. It, it, it was very, um, and then you never hear about him again. Right, so like it's kind of like, all right, like, huh. the series, they kind of do it, like, not Tarantino style, but, like, they open the series with, like, they give you the, 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 the moment when Monica knows that she's been double-crossed. And, you know, so that's, like, how the series opens. And then you don't see that for... <laughs> Right. A really long time. Huh. So it just feels like it's going really slow. Fair enough. But it's still really well done, and it's really – there. Uh, for I'd say 75% of it is really well huh. acted. Okay. I know once I get my hands on it, I'll watch it. Oh, it's totally worth watching. Especially in the winter, I'll watch anything. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's totally worth watching. Did you – you didn't go see Halloween Kills, did you? No. <sighs> well, you posted about wanting to go. Oh, I've seen it. I didn't know if you went. Yeah, I want, like, want to go see the new Halloween movie. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. I want someone to go with. It's so you went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you go with? I went by myself. Okay, I watched it by myself. Um, so I loved it. Okay, because Michael Myers is my favorite of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. of that slasher genre. Yeah, there is so much about that movie that's so badass, and he's just there's like there's so many good kills in it where it's just like there's absolutely no. Hesitation. I think that's what I was missing from the first one, the previous one. Fair enough. You probably if you didn't like dirty, gritty slasher. If you didn't like the 2018 one, you're not going to like this one. But you just said it was better kills. 
Like good kills. No, I said there was good kills. I didn't say there was better well, kills. Good there kills. was but there's there was like there's a but there's a there's a there's a whole sub plot to that movie that I did not like at all. What do you mean? So there's like the A plot of like the Michael Myers going and he's like trying to uh, kill Laurie Strode and right. like there's that whole the you people know people who survived in the first round. And there's this <laughs> subplot of these because it's it where Halloween 2018 ends is where Halloween Halloween kills starts. Right. Like lit like they're like the li- next day. Literally no it's not no 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 no. It's like five minutes later. Okay. It's literally um because you know that kid that gets stuck on the gate, like mm-hmm. he kills him and puts him on the gate or whatever. That's where the movie starts. Okay. And it's like you know the boyfriend who like kisses the other girl and pisses off the his girlfriend, like the main girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The movie starts with him, like, trying to call her and, like, okay. I'm so sorry for kissing. It. And I'm like, oh, shit. All right. We're, like, right here. All right. Um, that's where it starts. And so it's literally the same night. And, um, yeah, he just, like, <laughs> it's crazy because, like, you – it's, like, we've already seen a whole movie of him, like, going and massacring people. And then it's literally, okay, five minutes later, all right, he goes and massacres more people. But that's – that's how it should no, be. No, and th- I know, and that's great. Yeah, that's how it should be. But there's this, and without, I don't want to give away too much, but there's just this, like, under under subplot of, like, this, like, whole thing where they're kind of, like, this mob mentality thing takes over with the people in the town, and then. Like it, cancel culture. Uh, yeah, it kind of, they, yeah, it's, it was almost kind of like a preachy thing where they're they like, were oh like, my God, did you see what he did it, in 1970? Well, they're oh like, they're like, Michael's the real monster and he's turning us into re- into monsters. And it was kind of like, okay, like I kind of rolled my eyes at that. But for the most part, um, like the, the critics score on Rotten Tomatoes is like 43%. Like the critics did not like the movie. The audience score when I first saw it was 76 and it's kind of dwindling as people go see the movie. Um, but I but overall, like I'm still happy with it. I'm really excited for the third one, mm. ha- Halloween Ends, mm. uh, which is the next one. I'm really really excited to see that one because I think it, it's. Oh, also Laurie Strode takes a back seat in this one, but it makes sense why she does. People were pissed about that. They were like, "Oh, like it sucks that there's not more Laurie Strode." And I'm like, "Yeah, but it makes sense because she just got stabbed at the end of that one." So she's recovering because know. this one happens five minutes later. She's like recovering. Yeah, like what you expect that she's just going to be like wandering Stitch around. Stitch me with, up. I'm ready to go. Yeah, like now it, it, they it's made it Terminator. way more believable than that. <laughs> it was great. Watched all of Love on the Spectrum on Netflix, which was amazing. Tell if me about you that. You want to watch a feel good show that makes you? I've seen a little bit of it's it. It's amazing. Yeah, I crushed it. I crushed I think two adorable. seasons in like three days. I watched. Um, five minutes. I of didn't it. I expect think to like the show as much as I did, but I ended up truly loving it. I like. I have an affinity, an affinity for like awkward people. Kind of. Mm-hmm. I like. I love people with Down syndrome. I like people that are on the spectrum. Like I like the quirky, unique. Tell it like it is. No bullshit. No beat around the bush because yeah. they don't talk like that. They just no. tell you how they feel, and they. I don't know. Anyways, great show. Uh, I would recommend it to anybody who just wants a good feel good show. There's not many shows like that. No. We're really ultimately from beginning to end, it's a feel good show. Mm. And you're watching people go on first date. It's like it's it's a really good show. Shatner in Space. Please, if you have the time, watch CNN Anderson Cooper's interview with William Shatner after he was in space. It's about 10 minutes long or so, and the interview from beginning to end is absolutely amazing. You get to see William Shatner in space floating around, and he's like, oh, wow. I saw a clip of it. it, I'm weightless. Yeah. I'm weightless. Like, just his verbiage of like everything yeah. and then him looking at the earth and then their whole interaction in the interview is hilarious so Anderson Cooper and, and William, yeah. William Shatner he's well, 92 years old the say, oldest person to ever fly to space I ever was I was driving to work last week and I heard about that and in my head I didn't look it up but I, in my head I was like I have a feeling he's going to be Guinness uh, record holder for yeah. oldest person in space yeah which is awesome yeah <laughs> I mean, other than the fact that I don't really agree with billionaires being able to shoot themselves into space all the time. Shooting William Shatner into space, 100% agree with that. 100%. I'm a huge fan. I love, I've loved him forever. If Harrison Ford, 
if Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, anybody that's been yep. in the Star Wars movies, yep. if they like Obi Wan and and yep. um, and uh, Hayden Christensen yep. and uh, Obi Wan, I Ewan McGregor, like any of them are like we we kind of like to go to space too, and and uh, and uh, Bezos. No, not Bezos. The other guy, uh, not Zuckerberg. The uh, Tesla. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Thank you. Why did I forget Elon Musk? It's, it's, it's all good. Um, if Elon Musk was just like, yeah, I'll send all the Star Wars guys to, to space purely for a meme, like, do it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely do it. But don't go to space yourselves, you douchebags. Yeah. I know. They're idiots. No, I'll, I'll, I'll watch that interview. That's sad. It sounds it's, amazing. But their interaction is so funny because he – He's so funny, William Shatner. Oh, yeah. And he makes Anderson Cooper, like, a few times in the interview feel like shit in a good way. Because he'll say, he'll be like, oh, I didn't know you did that. He's like, oh, you don't know anything about me. You just think, like, he like he's, like, sarcastic. And, like, Anderson Cooper's at one point, like, off screen, like, laughing oh, yeah. hysterically. It's just a really good interview. And you get to see his experience in space as a 92-year-old man. Like, it was life-changing for him. Like, he literally had a life-changing uh, experience. At so. 92. Yeah. And I mean, really? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You die at yeah. 92 going okay. into space? Yeah. Oh, my God. You are forever remembered yeah. as, like, being a badass who died going to space. Yeah. You're William Shatner who died going into space. Yeah. You're Pretty Betty cool. White di who died going into <laughs> space at 90. Like, yeah. Betty White is now going to try to go to space just to beat him. Yeah. Um, at Because she's 99. Yeah. BuzzFeed... Did a ranking of all of the best cookies. Okay. Uh, 40 all-time favorite cookies. 40? Ranked, yeah. So the, a lot of these are American cookies. Oh, okay. So Are we talking like brand name cookies? Yeah. Oh, okay. So 40 all-time favorite cookies ranked from entirely overrated to these belong in a cookie museum. Okay. So at number 40. Yeah. What do you – I mean, there's a lot of options. 40 being overrated? Just f uh, least favorite. Okay. For, I mean, we're talking like maybe a digestive cookie? Yeah, I would go there. Okay. They're at Fig Newton. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. That 40 is Fig Newton? <laughs> How, I'm okay Fig with Newton, that. <laughs> Fig Newton's at my 40 for I'm sure. I'm okay with that. 39? You, oh, my God. Are you running all through 40? No, okay. no, no, Okay, 39. F frosted sugar cookies. So you know those ones that you get at, like, Walmart? Yes. Okay. I've never had them before. Krista loves them. Really? She literally – they're, they're the, Halloween, the Halloween version that is out right now because it's Halloween time, she bought oh, their, their mini version. But they have, like, pumpkins on them or whatever, right? No, they're, they're purple and orange, and then they have oh. like little bat sprinkles on them. And then you can get them in pumpkins. I've never they, had them before. They are so bad. Oh, God. Ugh, I hate them. And she's like, do you want a little cookie? I'm like, no, I don't want a little cookie. <laughs> Okay, so what? Well, let's just do top ten. I'll run through them really quick because I know we've been a, a while today. Okay, so Ennington's milk chocolate chip cookies. We can't get them here. Miss Fields number nine. You've had Miss Fields cookies before. Really? We Miss Fields are pretty good. They're good. Okay, so number, number nine. nine. Okay. So the at home Pillsbury holiday sugar cookie bakes. So you get the pumpkin, the Christmas and number tree ones. eight. Yeah, and the bunny ones. Really? That's what they said. I like them, but not not crazy. Okay, number Chips seven, Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Number six, Nutter Butters. I love. Nutter Remember Butters. the chocolate cover yes. that you got? I can oh, still get my them. God, so good. you can still get them in Canada. I'm so happy you can get Nutter Butters in Canada. Now. Pepperidge Farm. I'm confused about Never that. Never had I those. Really, I've had them, and they're okay. Keebler fudge strips. Those are awesome. I've never had those. Those are essentially like the dad cookie ones that are like the choco coconut rings. Or they're like rough. original Oreos at three. Original. Okay, so hold hold oh, on. Oh, don't 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 run through okay, this too okay, quickly. Yeah, yeah. So top three is Oreos at three. Yeah. Original Oreos. Okay. Okay. Number. So two. now I thought Oreo would be number one. Okay, that's your number one. Well, I just thought it would be number. It's not necessarily my number one, but I thought it would be number one. Nutter Butter is probably not my number one. Okay. Because I love Nutter Butters. That's why I don't they buy them. They are really good. Because I can't. I will eat an entire box in one. That's second. fair. Okay, number two. Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookies. These obviously we can't buy here. They're American. Oh, the ones you bake at home. The ones you bake at I've home. I've had those before. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah. Those are good. Nez, Nez, no, it's it's pronounced Nestle Toll House. Oh. From, uh, so you weren't really wrong when you said that Oreos would be your number one because they put the golden Oreo what? as number one. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. What? 
Definitely not number one. Golden number Oreo one. is number one? Number one. This is BuzzFeed? BuzzFeed. What? Right? What the hell? Not agreeing, BuzzFeed. No, I disagree vehemently. If anything, Golden Oreos are like 20 for me. Bottom. They're, they're, I would eat almost every single Oreo flavor ever before I got to gold. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. You eat a gold Oreo cu- uh, cookie, and you're basically eating a vanilla cookie with vanilla, like which is fine, but there's nothing mind blowing going on there. They're not. They're they're quite bland. There is nothing wrong with them. They no, are, no, I, I like they're fine. them. Fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm going to the grocery store and I'm like, and the, if the wife is like, oh, well, grab a package of Oreos, which one are you grabbing for? Chocolate, probably Definitely chocolate original. <laughs> probably chocolate original, right. if not double stuffed. Double stuffed, hundred percent. I'm surprised. I, <laughs> when you said or like when you before you turned your phone around, I thought it was going to be like Oreo like double a flavor stu- or something. no? I thought it was going to be oh, double, double stuffed. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I also or flavor. I'm running. Or, I'm running through my head, going, what flavor could it possibly be? Because they have so many cinnamon. Well, bun they're like the pop tarts like, of cookies. Yeah, 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 exactly. But the thing is, when I say that pop tarts and their flavors, pop tarts flavors aren't good. Like yeah, that's fair. Beyond the blueberry, strawberry, like the fruit ones, the fr- yeah, like yeah, and like maybe the chocolate ones, right? The chocolate one. Um, once you start getting into like birthday cake and you start getting into like milkshake, s'mores, s'more, like it's, their pop tarts are not that good. They taste really weird. And I my heart belongs to toaster toaster strudels. Yeah, that's, that's where, fair. I, that's why I don't buy toaster strudels or egos because I will eat them all. Yeah, at once. A hundred percent. I agree. And actually, um, most like more recently, I've been going to the grocery store and I've been trying to find my uh, cinnamon toast waffles or whatever, or yeah. cinnamon egos. Yeah. And I can't find them. Oh, so I don't know if it's it. just my grocery store or if I have to go to Maybe. a different one and look. Because I really hope that they haven't discontinued those. Ah, uh, okay. Because they're uh, those are yeah real good. I can't believe that golden Oreos. Yeah. That is. I know it's long today, but I also had a psychic reading on Sunday, so we could talk about that next podcast. Just that'll actually note. make sense because next week will be the Halloween episode, so that'll be perfect. We'll that we'll we'll talk we'll save that for next week. Maybe psychic um, and aliens. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Hilariously, the Halloween episode is going to be a lot of you talking, <laughs> which is good. It's actually you're good. definitely I the feel, Bert of this podcast. <laughs> I talked a lot this podcast, but I don't I'm feel definitely bad the at all. Tom of this podcast. To it. Mm, but I'm Tom in real life, so that's fine. We have traits of both. We have traits we of both. We both have traits of Bert both. Bert and Tom, did you – oh, my – before we leave, did, you saw I, – I think because you were watching it at your desk, but I think you saw the thing where they were like, we should get each other's dicks tattooed yeah. on – Yeah, okay. No part of me ever wants to do that with no. you. <laughs> no. So don't ask. No. Because the first thing I thought of was like, I don't want to do that no. with Adam. That That is so funny, and I really hope that they do it's it. It's them. They it's would never them. do it. They would never do it. Their wives would never let them do that. That's true. There's no I don't way. think I think the funny thing is is I don't think their wives would let them do it. I think Krista would let me do it. Fair. She would be like do it. That's hilarious. And That's I'd be fair. like, "Oh, oh man. I would be the one that would be apprehend like I would oh, have yeah. the apprehension about like I don't want my friend's t- dick tattooed on me." Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss uh, the MP podcast every week. What did I call it this week? Macro, Macro Pig? Macro Pigs? Macro Pigs or something. Yeah, it's the Macro Pig podcast this week. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Lincoln. I'm Avon. We'll catch you next week.